Hello and welcome to this video about continued fractions. In this video we'll be learning how to find the continued fractions of the square roots of integers that are irrational. A continued fraction looks like this numerical structure here. This is the continued fraction of the square root of 2 and as you can see it continues like this forever. If you prove that the square root of 2 is equal to this, then it is an extremely good way of seeing that it is irrational, and a good proof that it is irrational. This is another way of writing out the digits in a continued fraction in a more compact form. Here is the general form of a continued fraction, where all the numerators are always equal to 1, and the numbers a0, a1, and so on, are all positive, non-zero integers. And this general continued fraction may also be rewritten in this compact form. And now to find the continued fraction of the square root of 3, that we'll be using as an example of how to find a continued fraction of a square root of any integer. We'll firstly set it out like this, so as to see what it is that we're trying to find. And we can also write it out in this more compact form, so as to more easily write it out once it has been found. So we'll find it out using real numbers in the calculation, so as to learn a very simple way to find it first, so we can build on it to learn a better method later. So the first step is to get the floor function of this value, which is equal to the integer that is less than or equal to it. In this case, you can see that the floor of this value is 1, since with the floor function we're eliminating all of the numbers after the decimal point of this number. Then the next step is to add this number to the list. So this is what the continued fraction looks like so far, since we've only found the first value. So the next step is to get the frac of this same number, which is the value of everything after the decimal point, or this number minus its floor value. And so we get this number, that is less than 1, and positive, or it can be equal to zero in some cases, but is never equal to zero in the case of an irrational number. So we then get the reciprocal of this value. And this is what the reciprocal of this number is. And so the fifth step is to go back to step one using this new real number. And in the case of step one, this is the floor of this number. And so, continuing on with this calculation, we insert this number into the list, giving us this list of two numbers for the continued fraction. And so, we have to find the frac of this number, and then find the reciprocal of it, and then get the floor of this new real number, and then insert this new number onto the list, and then get the frac of this real number and then get the reciprocal of this number, and then get the floor of this number, and add this number onto the list. And we can go on doing this forever, to get an infinitely long list of numbers. And so now to use this more realistic notation, to have a bird's eye view of what is happening. So this is how the square root of 3 is written as a real decimal number. We get the first integer in the list by getting the floor of this number. We substitute this integer back into this continued fraction structure. We simplify this equation by subtracting this integer from both sides. We then get the reciprocal of both sides, which has this effect on the continued fraction. Now this next term in the continued fraction can be calculated just like the one before it was. 
Now the next term in this continued fraction is equal to the floor of this number. And so we substitute this number back into the continued fraction structure and continue doing all these steps until we get the length of continued fraction that we want. And now to write some computer code to find this continued fraction using this simple method. We set n to be equal to the number that we'll be trying to find the square root of and we'll set x to be equal to its square root. And we'll set up a loop to look for a finite number of terms in the continued fraction. We'll set the next term to be equal to the floor of the value of x. And we'll place this term in the continued fraction list. And we'll set x to be the next value to find the floor function of. We'll do two steps at once in this equation. We'll get frac of x, which is x minus a, and then we'll get the reciprocal of this number, and then we'll loop around to do this again. We'll close the loop using a second curly bracket. This should give us a fairly accurate value of the square root to at least 10 terms. It won't give us an infinitely precise list of terms, because x doesn't store this value with infinite precision. So we'll have to create a better storage type, so it can have infinite precision, and be capable of writing a long list with as many terms as we desire without failing. We can do this using a surd type. A surd type stores the irrational number using three integers as shown. B is the coefficient of the irrational square root number, D is the constant term, and C is a common denominator term. This type can create a list of continued fraction terms with infinite precision. So we'll use the square root of 3 as an example, and we'll show it being equal to a continued fraction in realistic notation. We'll set it equal to this third type and show the values of the terms even though it is in an unsimplified form and we show them because we want to observe them. So now in this step we have to calculate the floor. This can be done using a rough evaluation but there are more accurate ways to do it which we'll see later on. So then we substitute this number back into the continued fraction. And we subtract this integer from both sides. And we get this new third. Then we get the reciprocal of both sides. And we can calculate the reciprocal of this third by using this standard and well-known method. So now we have to calculate the reciprocal of the continued fraction, which is equal to this new continued fraction with a leading term of a1. And we can evaluate this term to be equal to the floor of this third and go back and repeat the steps that we've already done. So now it's time to evaluate the reciprocal of the more general expression of this third where b, c and d are integers. The first step is to write it out like this, showing that we want to find the reciprocal of this expression, and then to swap the denominator and numerator, and then to multiply it by this expression to eliminate the square root expression in the denominator. So now we have an integer in the denominator and a third expression in the numerator. So now to find the reciprocal of the frac of this third, which is the third minus the floor of it that we've just found, which is equal to the ith term ai. So now we can collect terms into this second bracket, which will make it easier to work with. Then we'll flip this fraction around and multiply it by this expression, which creates the difference of squares in the denominator so it will become an integer. So then we end up with this expression, which looks messy, but is easy for a computer to manipulate. 
and which will always be precise enough to get a correct continued fraction to any number of terms. And so these will be the next values for the terms of this third type. It will then be necessary to get the greatest common divisor for all three of these integers and divide all three terms by it so they don't grow infinitely large or too large for the computer to handle. It is best to keep them as small as possible. And now to see how to find the floor of this third. I have already proven that this expression is true for the floor function in my video on floor function proofs, which makes the computation of this expression more reliable. And we can even manipulate it again to be this, which increases its reliability. So now to write some code so as to calculate the continued fraction for any square root of an integer. We start with these two variables as before. Then we set these terms of the third structure. They are always equal to this to begin with. Then we create a loop to find a finite number of terms. Then we find the floor of the current third using this equation. Then we append it to the list. Then we evaluate the terms for the next third. Then we get their greatest common factor. And we simplify them so they don't grow too large. And we go back to find the next term in the continued fraction. And we can modify this program so as to finish when the continued fraction starts to repeat. It always seems to repeat the information from the second integer in the list. We copy the information from the third at this time into some checking variables. Then we check to see if these variables repeat at any time after this. And if they do repeat, we signal the loop to discontinue by setting a boolean variable called continue to be equal to zero. So here are the results for the square root of 19, which has a recurring period of six. You can see in the first method that uses real numbers that it starts to break down at the 19th term because it lacks enough precision. The third storage type has infinite precision and is accurate forever, but maybe not for thirds that need to store extremely large integers. I've got a third method that terminates when the terms start to repeat. I use the test to see whether the third variables were equal to those of the second third in the continued fraction. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you in your quest to study continued fractions and to write computer code to calculate them. And I wish you all the best in your quest to do these things.